Our world is the most connected it has been in history. That connection allows people to try things they never would have otherwise. One of those things is art. More people are able to share their art with the world without needing to put it in a gallery. Now art and artists are more accessible to billions of people across the world, essentially laying the, leveling the playing field. Art comes in many forms though. There's digital art that's created with a computer. There's also traditional art that uses pencils, paints, pens, etc. I personally am a traditional artist, but that's not true anymore because I bought a drawing tablet. Actually, no, it's an iPad. I don't, I, I bought one. So my favorite traditional art is with uh, paint pens, right? And watercolor markers, they're really fun to use. And you can just achieve different effects. Other mediums look beautiful as well, like acrylic paints and gouaches are also two really popular traditional mediums as well that typically are more vibrant and are flatter and less malleable on paper. Personally, I don't use gouache or acrylic because I think it's a little messy. Also, I don't know how to use them. I'm not one to talk about messiness though because I literally use water to color my drawings. I truly enjoy the freedom of a blank canvas or a piece of paper that brings with my mind. With a blank sheet of paper, I can create anything. If I want to draw my favorite show character, I can. If I want to draw a cute little mushroom, I can. If I just want to draw lines and see where it takes me, I can also do that. You can truly do whatever you want with art. If you have the technical skills and the right inspirations, I think too many people worry about being bad at art, saying things like, I'm not creative enough, or I just don't know where to start. I say to you, just go for it. Nothing in history has ever happened without somebody saying, just go for it. With the mindset of just going for it, you can achieve anything. My earliest art was trash when I started getting into the hobby, and it's still a little, kind of a little trashy a little bit. But I've improved, slowly but surely. I'm still not even that good. I will never be a perfect artist. Striving for perfection is what achieves greatness, or at least I think it does for me. Just continuing to get better as I learn more techniques and find more inspiration. Finding inspiration is incredibly important and debatably the most important thing to, for an artist. My biggest inspiration is music. It has been ever since I started. I just think of my favorite exercise is taking a lyric I think is good or funny or even creative and just drawing what I see in my head. That approach is open-ended and it can lead to some weird or creative things that I wouldn't have thought of in the first place. As long as you're inspired and willing to learn and experiment, you are an artist. You don't need to be famous or be good to be considered one. As long as you create something, you're an artist. If you've been thinking about getting into art but don't know how, just let me give you some advice. All you need is a pencil and some paper and some paints or whatever you have on hand. It is literally that easy. Find some inspiration and go draw or make music or do whatever you want. Just be creative. Life is too short not to be. So in all honesty, go crazy. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Now I'm going to pass the show over to Noah where, where he'll talk to you about the theater after these few short words. Pineapple, hamburger, coffee. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Do you have a hobby? Do you need something to do in your free time? Well then, 4CNC has got you covered. I'm Noah Jazabski and welcome to 4C Imagery. We're gonna be focusing on the actors today at Temple as we watch them rehearse and act. Temple Theater, the place in Sanford, North Carolina where you can come and relax and get your fix on in-person shows and performances. You can find out what is coming next at the Temple Theater on the side of the building. 
The alleyway leading to the temple dressing room is where the actors spend a big majority of their time getting ready for their performances. Now here we have the temple teens rehearsing. They are singing passionately with their voices. Notice how engaged with the song our stars are. The teacher Gavin is studying the performers hard as he is directing them with their song. Look how big this group of temple teens are. They are hard at work rehearsing their songs. Notice how focused they are. They don't even get distracted from my camera filming them. The stage director is hard at work. Young and talented, he is making sure stuff is getting done. Gavin, the teacher, is going off the music sheets and teaching the up-and-coming actors. And thanks for joining me today. After this break, we'll be back with Shabrika, who will cook us up something great to eat. Littering North Carolina roadways is illegal and can result in fines up to $1,000 for those who commit this offense. You can report those who litter by contacting NCDOT's litter management section or by calling 1-800-331-5864. Late night snack, you may want to hold off on that. Are you snacking because you're hungry or because you're sleepy? Evidence shows a lack of sleep can cause overeating and weight gain. And because it's late night, many people tend to go for foods that are loaded with carbs and high calorie junk food. These items can send your blood sugar and insulin levels out of balance and put you at risk for type 2 diabetes. For more info, visit www.diabetes.org. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining 4C Imagery. I'm Shabrika Bell, and welcome to Cooking with Brika. I'm excited because today I'll show you how to make one of my favorite dishes. It's quick, it's easy, and delicious. Get into this yummy garlic pasta. Doesn't it look delicious? You can make it anytime or take it as a dish to a party. It's sure to be a hit. But before we get into the recipe, let me give you a little background about pasta. Many historians believe pasta originated in Italy. They're convinced that Marco Polo actually brought it back from his epic voyage to China. But pasta can be traced back to 4th century BC, where an Etrusian tomb showed a group of natives making what appears to be pasta. Pasta was also a meal of the Romans. It became a common food in the States during the late 19th century. Pasta comes in various shapes and sizes and is enjoyed all over the world. Its multicultural history brings us comfort and a culinary connection to our past. This recipe is easy to make. You will need pasta, garlic, butter, soy sauce, fish sauce, salt, grated Parmesan cheese, and parsley for garnish. First, crush your garlic. Then chop your garlic. Boil your water. I'm using thin linguine, but you can use whatever pasta you like. Make it your own. Make sure that all your pasta is in the pot. You don't want any hanging out. Add salt to your chopped garlic. Saute the garlic and salt mixture with butter over medium heat. When the garlic is slightly brown, add soy sauce and fish sauce. Give that mixture a stir on medium heat for about a minute. If you want to kick this dish up a notch, you can also add oyster sauce. Your pasta should be done now. Go ahead and strain it, but leave a little water in the pasta. This will keep the pasta from drying out once it's plated. Next, toss your pasta in your sauce for about a minute. All done, and that's how you make garlic pasta. If you like parsley, you can add a little to your pasta. 
It not only adds a nice presentation, but it gives welcoming flavor. You can top your pasta off with more Parmesan if you'd like, or you can enjoy as is. You can also top with some grilled chicken, sauteed shrimp, and if you're a vegetarian, you can add steamed broccoli, sun-dried tomatoes, or sauteed yellow bell peppers, or hey, add whatever you want. Whatever your flavor is, go for it. Thanks for tuning in to Cooking with Brika. I'm Shabrika Bell for 4C Imagery. After the break, we'll be back with a moment with magic with Ronald. Ooh. I'm Chris Jackamick. I served in the United States Air Force and I deployed three times. So in 2017, I was serving as an Air Force First Sergeant. Our motto in that role is my job is people, everyone is my business. But unfortunately in that year, I would lose my own brother, Lance Corporal Adam Jackamick, to suicide. The majority of veteran suicides are from guns. I store my weapons securely, not only for myself, but for my family. My service never stops. Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in to 4C Imagery's first production. That garlic pasta that Shabrika made looked delicious. Now I'd like to welcome you to a little thing that I call a moment for magic. I'm your host, Ronald Wilden, and today I'll be showing you how to pull off some basic magic that you can do just about anywhere. Before we start, I'd like to give you a brief history of magic. The earliest recorded modern practice of magic tricks was done by a man named Jean-Eugene Robert Houdin in the mid-1800s. Originally a trained clock worker, he switched to performing magic when he opened a magic theater in Paris in the 1840s. The magic he performed at the time was creating small mechanical pieces that seemed to move and act as if they were magically alive. Many consider this man to be the father of modern magic. The late 19th century brought on the celebrity magic. This was better known at the time as Harry Houdini. Harry Houdini was better known for his ability to escape impossible situations, now referred to as escapology. Nowadays, magic is flourishing in popularity and can be found anywhere from children's birthday parties to large events in Las Vegas. Luckily for everyone tuning in today, I will be showing you how to pull off some tricks to get you started. Now for this trick, a person will walk into a room, cover the front of their body with a blanket, then magically appear to start floating off the ground. This is a simple trick anyone can learn. Start by placing a couple strips of Velcro on the inside of your shoes. So when you place your feet together, they stick together. Now when you move one shoe, the other shoe moves along with it. This is the key to the trick. When the magician is covering their self with the blanket, what they're actually doing is removing their right foot out of the shoe and placing it behind their other shoe. When the cover of the blanket, they are lifting their left foot off the ground, giving the illusion that they are floating. When finished performing this trick, put your right foot back into the shoe and then remove the blanket. Now we are going to learn how to do the cutting off fingers trick and trick. This is what it should look like. Start with the string wrapped around your thumb like this. Take the piece of string closest to you and put it behind your pointer finger. We're going to repeat this for all the fingers. So take the piece closest to you and put it behind your middle finger. Take the piece closest to you and put it behind your ring finger. Take the piece closest to you and put it behind your pinky. Now you're going to have to cross the two pieces of string and take the piece farthest from you and put it behind your ring finger. This also has to be repeated. So take the piece farthest from you and put it behind your middle finger. Take the piece farthest from you and put it behind your pointer finger. Take the piece farthest from you and put it behind your thumb. At this point, you are ready to perform the trick. So remove the loop off your pinky, grab the two pieces of string, and pull. This is a good trick to do to, with friends and family. Tell them you're going to cut off their fingers by pulling the strings really hard. For this last trick, I will be showing you how to make a toothpick disappear and reappear. First hold the toothpick in your hand as shown. Open your hand dramatically as if you throw the toothpick clear with your mind. Now as if you're catching the toothpick out of clear air, close your hand and voila, it's back. All you need to do to accomplish this super easy trick is to tape the toothpick to the back of your thumb as shown. Bend your thumb down to expose the toothpick and straighten your thumb to make it disappear. And there we go guys, some easy to learn tricks to get you started on your magical journey. Confidence is key, so remember with lots of practice and determination, the more believable your tricks will become. 
Thank you for joining me for a moment for magic. I hope to see everybody again on 4C Imagery. 